has nostalgia taken over your mind? <laughs> I feel like um, my May reading month um, had a lot of nostalgia kind of wrapped up in it. Um, the first thing that I read, well, completed in the month of May was actually a reread of something that I read in April. Um, let's just get into it. So Betrayed, a Renaissance vampire romance, Bipunin, book one. And so when I originally read it, which I'll go through, um, actually, I think I already shared this with you guys, but I'll just go through it one more time. Um, there had been a um, update done to the book where some things had been like rewritten and reorganized. And so I wanted to do a comparison between the first book and the second book. And when I went to post my, you know, updated review, I realized that the book was reclassified, which is probably great once you see my review. So I think if you were to look this book up now, it's listed as like, I think a paranormal thriller, which I think is very much in line and my review will reflect that. So um, I first completed it on February 29th of 2022. And I believe, not February, <laughs> April. And I believe in my April wrap up, I included the first part of this review. So I'm just kind of gonna skip through that part. And it basically ends off with me saying, I look forward to seeing how this will all play out. And so updated and finally rated, because I didn't rate it at first. I just kind of left the Goodreads review. So I rated and reviewed it on June 3rd. And so let's see what I wrote. After reading the updated version of this story, I feel comfortable bumping up my rating to a four star, though as a romance, I still feel it is a 3.5, which is a good point that it's now been reclassified. It's no longer classified as a romance. So there is an element of romance to this story and one scene in particular that caters to romance fans, but overall the story still feels more like a paranormal epic or a saga, which I happen to like. It is a bit heavy in historical elements, which I think will also appeal to those who enjoy paranormal tales of the Renaissance period, but it may turn some away. For those looking for a romantic depiction of vampires, they won't find it here. These vampires are dark, and there is a certain level of gore that may deter romance readers unless that's something specifically they are looking for. The sibling drama between Bipunin and his half-brother is one of the more compelling parts of the story. A lot of emotion there. One major difference between the two versions is that we get to meet Bipunin's love interest earlier and a little um, more than in, in the earlier version. Overall, an interesting story, but perhaps mislabeled. And like I stated, as when I um, actually went to write the review, I did see that the book was reclassified. So it's no longer considered a romance. And going into it, I think readers will kind of appreciate that more. Yes, it has some romantic elements, but it's really not um, a romance. So at the end, it states, this one is strictly for adult fans of classic non-romantic vampire tales with an appreciation for Renaissance history and culture. So yeah, I really enjoyed the story. Um, this is going to be part of a series. I believe book two is out already and I will have to pick it up at some point down the road. So the next one <clears throat> is the book Home. And this is actually a book I got to read after interviewing one of the authors for my um, Lit Carnival Read Local show. I do a read local show and a read all over show. And I really liked the premise of this book. Um, it wasn't out yet when we did the interview. And so I was given a chance to read a digital arc, which I'm very excited about. Um, so let's go ahead and get into my review. I really enjoyed this book and was happy to read a digital arc after meeting the author, which has in no way influenced my rating. After hearing the premise of this book, I was very interested in acquiring it only to discover it had not yet been released. I jumped at a chance to read an arc. I like stories that incorporate supernatural and or religious elements such as angels, demons, spirits, etc. I also like that this story is a bit of a genre mashup with elements of science fiction and paranormal encompassing an urban and modern environment. I like the main character of Home right away, but soon became even more impressed 
with the other three teens he encounters. In many ways, this is a classic good versus evil story with a chosen one theme, but it does go beyond that a little. There are many mysteries um, in this story that go unanswered by the end of the first book, but there is no cliffhanger. This is a good stopping point before the characters move on to their next phase of adventures. <clears throat> there is one main issue that kept me from giving this story a higher rating, but before I mention it, I should point out something. This story operates on the notion that the reader is willing to accept the biblical concepts of heaven and hell, angels and demons, as part of the overall worldview. While this is right up my alley, a reader expecting a less biblical approach may have an adjustment period or be turned off. Back to my one major concern, there is a part of the book that slows down in pacing to allow the reader to meet a VIP, not giving any spoilers. Um, this took me out of the narrative. I, I didn't feel like the right place and time for this VIP to show up. Then the way it was described seemed to be a really bold move for the author. It didn't stop me from appreciating everything that happened before or after this point, but it did cause me to put it down for a bit. Overall, this was a fun book, a cool approach to powered characters and a modern world dealing with the supernatural. Recommend it to fans of YA Paranormal, genre mashups with religious elements, and classic good and evil stories. So yes, I'm very much into it and look forward to more in the series. Try to ignore Marge, she's having a tough day. Okay, so next up is self-publishing for the first time author, um, author your ambition. This book is by MK Williams. I follow her YouTube channel. Um, I purchased this book a while back, but I never read it up until this time because I wanted to see if it would be a good reference for my niece who is an aspiring author. She wants to pursue self-publishing. I've been giving her a lot of guidance, but wanted to provide her with a good reference. And I think this is it. This also counts as my Read with Faye book for the month of May. So let's just get into my review. <laughs> this was my Read with Faye selection for the for May 2022. I picked it up because I've been helping an expiring author pursue self-publication and wanted to offer her some reference materials. There were other books that I'd already considered and then I decided to try this one. I purchased it a while back, but never read it until then. I thoroughly enjoyed this quick and concise read. Is it, an, it is an inspirational and straightforward approach to a first time self-publication without any sugarcoating. It gives a new author realistic expectations. I understand that an update has been released for it and hope to reread it once I am able to acquire the update. So this review is only for the 2020 edition. So I think if you try to get it right now, you're getting the 2022. And so there's probably stuff in there that I haven't seen yet, which, you know, but regardless, I ended up giving it a five star. Highly recommend it for those who want to take self-publishing seriously and get the most out of their publishing goals. All right, let's move on to the next. Okay, so let's get into my next five star review. Up on the Roof and Other Stories Revised with a Bonus Short Story by Judy Ann Davis. Let's just get into it. This was one of the IWSG Book Club selections for the month of May 2022. While I wasn't expecting to dislike this collection in any way, I wasn't expecting to thoroughly enjoy it either. Um, I'd say my actual rating for this collection would be a 4.5, but have no issue bumping, bumping it up for most rating systems. Typically a fan of all things speculative, dabbling in cozy mystery, I was delighted by this uh, mostly contemporary fiction collection with drizzles of history and humor. Here are my general ratings for each story. So there's quite a few, I'm just gonna list them and give you the ratings. Okay, Up on the Roof, a four. Straw Ponies, a four. Poppies for Zanetta, a four. Ball Revelations, a five. The Amulet, a five. Recycling Kyle, a five. The Wedding, 4.5. Computer Junkie, five. Winging it, a four. Adding it all up, 4.5. Rocking the Boat, a five. Flight of the Frenzied Housewife, a five. Trapped, a four. Best Friends, a four. The Bellhop and the Poet um, is five. I think that one's probably my favorite. <laughs> um, temporary Mom, a five. 
collecting junk 4.5 true colors of four the vase 4.5 and holiday bonding a four while there are few while there are few emotionally charged moments and some tough topics addressed this collection has an overall lighthearted and inspirational feel not all stories have a happy ending but they all have but they have the best ending for the story being told. Highly recommend it to fans of short fiction, realistic fiction, and wholesome fiction. So I really enjoyed it. I'm so glad we picked that for the book club. It was a nice surprise for me. All right, and the last one up, this is a four-star review. This is the Orn of Tain, The Chronicles of Aiden Weaver, number one by Yvette Carroll. Let's get into it. This was one of the IWSG book club reads for the month of May 2020. <laughs> I enjoyed this book and hope to continue the series. This is very reminiscent to the feeling I had of reading Peter Pan for the first time or watching the Never Ending Story movie for the first time. It is a typical chosen one tale with a young boy as the main character. The characters in the book are magical. They are shape-shifting insects. Um, I can't decide if they are bug-sized or human-sized. There are many small details throughout the story that are unclear to me, thus the lack of a higher rating. But even with having a few small details unclarified, I really enjoyed the plot and began to care about some of the characters. While the main character is likable, I find that he's not my favorite. I enjoy the supporting characters more and hope to see more of their stories in the books to come. Recommend it to fans of middle grade or tween fantasy and adventure. This one was really fun. So I'm looking forward to getting into that one more. That is um, what I read in June. Those are my book reviews. I'll be putting together my whip update soon because I have been doing some writing and illustrating. So that'll be coming along with, you know, whatever it else I usually do that I haven't done in, in a while. So stay safe, guys. Be blessed. And I'll see you next time.